Hello and welcome to my new channel where we take old clothes and make it happen. Uh, sorry, make it fashion. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my new channel where we take old clothes and make it fashion. My name is Pierre, I'm a fashion designer and I want to inspire you to think twice before you throw away your old clothes. So please join the club, subscribe to my channel and help me spread my upcycling message to the moon and back. And let's start with a new project. Last week we had the dangerous heat gun experiment. Oh, the smoke coming out of it. Today... I'm gonna do my signature move again, sorry I had to do it. But we're gonna do some... Slashing. I'm gonna slash and gash, cut another hole in your ass. So fabric slashing is basically a way to slash fabrics. <laughs> you sew a whole bunch of scraps together in between two layers and then cut it in to cause basically some fraying and let it like bloom, bloom, bloom. So this technique is great for upcycling. Also, if you just have a lot of fabric scraps left and you don't know what to do with them, you can all use them in this kind of project. So I'm going to demonstrate it on an old tank top, but if you want to start a little bit easier, you also just make a square piece of fabric of your preferred size. You can start a little bit smaller and sew it on the front of a jumper or sew it on the back of a denim jacket, for example. Or you can use it to sew on top of a cushion cover or just as a piece of art on the wall. It's really cool, guys, so you will find a purpose. So I collected some old clothes. Yeah, welcome to my channel. I have a yellow tank top that I'm going to use as the base layer and then I have some old men's shirts that's gonna be in between and as a top layer I'm gonna use a denim layer. Oh and I also happen to have still the like cutting waste scraps from my patchwork top and I'm gonna try to put that in between as well. So I'm gonna start with taking the base layer aka the tank top slashing aka slashing aka cutting it open and i'm taking my big old dogs as a weight and no they don't like to be called weights but don't worry they don't bite um, i'm just gonna take that and use it as a pattern to lay it on the men's shirt so that i can get like one layer of exactly the same shape and i'm doing that with the other shirt as well so i'm first gonna make a piece of denim that is big enough to cut out the shape of the tank top basically just sew some pieces of denim together so that i can use that as the top layer so i got four full layers now i have the base shirt and they are here again, my big friends from the construction company. Ooh, look out, and... Then I have two layers of men's shirt. It's not cut that well, guys. So I'm gonna put my not so carefully cut layers together and kind of try to carefully pin it together. So I'm placing the four layers exactly on top of each other or well, at least I tried and I pin them around the side seam and hemline. So make sure to have like a good needle in there, like a denim needle. And then I'm just gonna close the edges with a big stitch because I want to get it out easy later. So I'm gonna take the remainder of the denim pants and cut it into smaller pieces. So you can almost use the whole jeans or whatever you have. So the way you get it out of the pants, you want to lie it on the shirt and not like diagonal because that's gonna prevent it from fraying too nice. Curious how this is gonna work with the sewing. So now I'm just gonna fill the layers with some more scraps and lie it as flat as possible in between there, spreading it out quite evenly. Uh, yeah, it sounds like making a sandwich. It's almost the same, only you have to just make sure that everything is nice and flat and the scraps are not folded. And yeah, guys, get creative here. Put some color in there as well. Rags of many colors. That's gonna really make a difference later. And also make sure to use some fabric scraps that are fraying nicely. So not only like t-shirts or anything like that, because then you will not get the nice effect later. And I'm also putting in some of the remainders of the shirts. More powdered sugar. 
a little fresh cream, a little vegetable. So I put my ironing board strategically at the same height as my table. I'm just gonna give all the layers a quick press so that it's nice and flat to sew over it. Then I'm gonna take my pins again because you know, pinning is winning yeah. and I'm scared that the scraps are gonna move too much when I start sewing. So I'm just gonna basically place pins everywhere. I start around the edges to line everything up nicely and then I start to pin also around. all over the body just to hold the scraps in place. Let's hope that my dear old puff will <laughs> manage. I'm not gonna worry too much about sewing perfectly straight. I mean, you can if you want, but I don't think it's really necessary. How convenient is that? Wow! So I'm sewing vertical lines parallel to the side seam and they vary between one and two centimeters apart from each other. I just try to make it a little bit irregular because I think it's gonna look nicer, but you don't have to. I just wouldn't stitch too close, like closer than one centimeter together because it's gonna be really hard to cut it open then later. I literally finished all my last pieces of yarn. Piece of small. <laughs> it's gonna be a patchwork of my last yarns as well. That is how it is looking. I know it looks like a bulletproof vest, but we're not ready yet. Slashing. It's nothing more than going in between the lines that I sewed and slashing the fabric open. We're looking for the bin by the way. It's everywhere. So I'm taking my fabric scissors and I'm gonna slash all the fabric layers open except for the bottom layer. At least I try to. Guys, this is really tricky. It's really hard to not accidentally cut in your base layer. Like, I made a few holes in the tank top, unfortunately. I just repaired them quickly with a piece of fabric, but it's really hard to avoid with a sharp fabric scissors. You wouldn't almost want to use like a fur scissors or something with not such a sharp tip, but of course I didn't have one. So it's all slashed. I try to cut like some of the basically stripes a little bit like off so that the yellow would peek a little more through. I'm first gonna throw it in the washing machine now and see what it looks like when it comes out. So this is what it looks like after a washing machine and dryer. So it looks really nice and fluffy and yeah, you can just go ahead and pet it now. Don't worry, it doesn't bite either. Honestly, it's the ideal companion. You can just pet it the whole day. You don't have to feed it anything, guys. I really like the result. You can make some minor adjustments with your scissors if it's necessary. So I'm gonna close it quickly on my overlock machine. If you do it on a normal machine at home, make sure to use like a zigzag so that the seams will not break open. So voila, that's the end result. I think this is such a cool texture. It is very unique. It is very runway, very experimental. I could definitely see this in a graduation collection of a very talented person, AKA me. It does not need anything, but you might have to give it a haircut sometimes because the fraying might continue. Anyway, I think it's a very joyous piece of clothing. And I think I'm gonna do the denim jacket idea as well for a future video. Let me know in the comments if you're interested to see something like that. And spread this video with your friends who might find it useful because that really helps to grow my channel and spread my upcycling message to the moon and back. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.